Hold on. Great. All right. So scholarship opportunity slash academic and artistic kind of stacks and how that kind of works out. Can you all hear me okay? Someone's printing something in the office, so it's a little loud on my end. Great. All right. So there are scholarship opportunities that are both through Chapman University as, itself for academic purposes. And then we also do have um, dance talent scholarships. Um, those are more limited. So we have less of that. And Chapman is very, very gracious with their scholarships um, in terms of academic. So there is that. And academic and artistic scholarships do stack. So they also transfer all the way through your four years here at Chapman. It just varies sometimes with the amount, some depending on housing, because that comes into um, into the equation and everything like that. So, yes, we have a lot of scholarship opportunities, which is great. And you can also apply for more as you kind of go through the go through the years. I just got one for my senior year. So they're always there. You just got to look for them and apply for them because most people won't. So that's a great tip. Um, if you were double majoring, you can be FA. Like I said, the main difference between a BFA and BA really is just the amount of credit. So some students who feel very passionately, very passionately about pursuing another major that may have more credit requirements, such as business administration or the health sciences, um, sometimes they'll opt to do just the BFA because they're still dancing just as much, still performing, um, still creating and choreographing. It's just kind of about splitting your time the way that you want to. We really pride ourselves on our individualized education and kind of really getting out of what you want from the opportunities and the experiences here. So it's very possible to be a BFA and have another major, um, but then it's also very common to have a BFA and another major. Another thing to note is Chapman University does require you to at least have a, we call it a cluster or a minor. So all students have to have some sort of other interdisciplinary study attached to their major. So for example, my, uh, my minor is in leadership studies. So that's, that's mine. Some people have um, integrated educational studies. Some people have an entrepreneurship minor. And then some people choose to just have a cluster. So it's just a set of classes. So they don't have to have a full set minor if they are really, really passionate about just doing dance. But that is a requirement. Um, all right, just going down the list. And please stop me if you have any follow-up questions on any of the things that I mentioned. I really want you guys to feel comfortable um, to kind of bring up anything that you need. Um, so virtual versus in-person auditions. Like I said, we will be having two in-person auditions. And these are kind of just more so of a timing thing. And when um, you apply, if you do early action versus um, regular um, action, that kind of will change the way that we go about that. Um, for all of this year, I can't really speak to years preceding the uh, or sorry, coming after that. Um, but like I said, we do have two in person auditions, and then the rest will be virtual this year. Virtual auditions are usually very, very similar to our in person auditions where um, you usually take a class, a warm up class, or um, just something to kind of really get the body moving. That's not a part of the audition. It's more so for you to audition us, um, see how you like taking our faculty's class, um, see how you like the community that we build in our classes, um, and also just really to kind of get into the community and get into your body. From there, you go into performing your solo um, for faculty member or members, and then it goes into um, an interview process right after that. So it's a super chill day it's nothing that's super ex um, extensive where you're doing like a million classes all day that you're being watched the entire time and and everything like that it's it's very similar to both our in-person um auditions and our virtual auditions which is nice because you really do get the feel and a lot of times we have our current students there as well kind of talking to you and giving you their insight and advice um so how many dancers do we plan on admitting to the dance program for fall 2022 um, I do not have the actual number for that. Um, typically, our average incoming class size is a, has been about 45 students. Um, we are looking to possibly decrease that number a little bit as we are growing so much. Um, so depending on how many we are looking to accept, um, we usually have a high um, acceptance rate, which is incredible for us. But again, we're growing, which is amazing because we're getting kind of, we're getting seen and we're getting really great opportunities from outside people as well. 
So I can't give you exact numbers because we don't know every year, um, but it's been pretty, pretty stable thus far. In terms of scheduling for a BA freshman, that's a really great point to bring up because all incoming dance students start as a BA. So you can't choose to come in as a BFA or a BA, you're automatically a BA and then the end of your sophomore year, um, you can audition for the BFA track. And typically that's pretty similar to how you would audition to become an undergrad. Um, it's typically you perform a solo, have an interview and you're kind of seeing how you've, how you've grown and kind of the things that you've done thus far in the department. Again, it's a super chill, low key process. Um, they really just want it to be individualized so that you can feel seen. Um, so that's something to note there, a normal schedule is typically since we are a liberal arts school, you have your other academic classes, um, such as your gener general education courses, whether that be math or your science or a cultural course, um, along with your three technique classes. So coming in, we have equal emphasis in ballet, jazz and modern. Um, and then you take an introduction to dance studies course, which kind of gives you an overview of everything that you'll be covering here at Chapman, as well as really getting you kind of um, acclimated to kind of life here in the department. So it's a really great way to kind of bring everything into a culmination. Um, that being said, you can get rid of some of those general education courses with um, previous college credits, um, whether you're transferring, transferring in from a different university or four-year institution, um, or even a junior college institution. You can also do AP credits, or I know some other states have different requirements of how those transfer over, but they do transfer over, um, and Chapman's website does have specifics on those exact credits to make sure that they do transfer over. So I came in um, already a semester ahead with my credits, which was great because then I was able to really kind of start to hone in and focus on the things that I wanted to do. Um, but you do have to complete your general education requirements. But they do transfer over, which is great. So I already kind of talked about the BA program being compatible for each other major, other major, specifically the IES major, which is integrated educational studies. Um, they are extremely compatible. That's one of our most popular um, double majors for both the BA and sometimes the BFA as well. Um, all freshmen are required to live on campus unless you are a commuter student. However, we do encourage um, those students to live on campus to really get that kind of first year experience um, and kind of be close to your friends. And it's really nice because for your freshman year, they kind of put all of College of Performing Arts in one building or at least one floor. So you either will be rooming with other dancers or you could be rooming with a musical performance major or a screen acting major. So it's a super way, a super great way to kind of make friends and also get a feel for Chapman University and how that works being a student there. Um, usually we do require that sophomores also live on campus for their second year. Um, however, with COVID, we have been more lenient about that just to kind of spread out all the bodies in the area a little bit more. So they have had the opportunity to go and live off campus. Typically your junior and senior year, you can move off campus into the local neighborhoods and live with your friends. Um, how many dancers are in each class? Not sure specifically if you mean all the incoming, like the incoming freshman class or within like a technique class. So I'll just answer both. Like I said, we typically have about 45 incoming freshmen, first year students. Um, within each of the classes, we do have smaller class sizes, sizes, which is great. So typically we're looking about 25, 28 max 30. So we really like to keep our class sizes small so that we really do have that focused individualized education. That being said, we also like to um, spread out the amount of sections that we have so that we have new faculty that can teach and you get a wide range of styles um, within your modern sections. So you may have like one professor who's really big on teaching Lamone technique. And then the next semester you can take a Horton class. So we have really great opportunities to really diversify your education as well. 
We'll come back to admission audition requirements at the end so we can answer all those questions. There is a way to be on our dance team while majoring in dance as well. Um, so our dance team, as well as our hip hop team, Team Shaka, are both audition based clubs here on campus that you do have to audition for, but you can audition for as a dance minor, a dance major. Um, and sometimes we even have students who are not either of those things come out, come out and audition for that as well. Here's Julianne, the chair of our department, oh, if she would like to say hi. Um, anyway, so that is something um, that is super exciting and that is different from our basic curriculum here in the dance department. So like I said, that is an audition based um, program. Um, and I want to say we are 14 year first place um, winners for our Chapman University dance team. So we do compete every year. Our hip hop team does not compete. However, they have a lot of performance opportunities, both in our Chapman Dance Alliance Club um, performances, as well as um, our sorority Greek-like performances. And they're also, um, they're kind of their own smaller, smaller performances. Um, great. After creating or after submitting your creative supplement for early action, um, oh, I guess that's kind of an admission question. So I'm going to group all those at the end so we can kind of go through that if you guys have any more specific questions. I'm just reading through these comments now. And then some of them are also personal questions. So that's great. I can answer those. Yes, you can perform the same solo that you submitted for the pre-screen. Um, and it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to make that an extended one minute version of that solo, or if you would like to kind of make that that two minute solo. It's kind of kind of what you choose. So there are still COVID restrict, uh, restrictions on campus and in the classes. For example, we do have to wear masks when we are in a class of people. Um, and indoors all of our facilities. Um, who knows how long that's going to be, but Chapman is being very adamant about keeping us safe. We also do have um, our performances, um, mask requirements for that as well. So when we're on stage, we're performing, um, we have masks for those. Um, we do not have any more caps for room, I guess, capacity. That was a big thing that we did have um, kind of alternating um with who could be in the studio at once we can all be in there together now and it's super great um and we also have testing requirements and um vaccine requirements as well um if you are not vaccinated then you still have the opportunity to get tested um and then if you are vaccinated you do have um an exemption for getting tested um but then we do have a covid clearance kind of structure that goes through um every day to make sure that you are still healthy and everything so that you have access to the facilities while keeping our community safe. Um, audition solos are typically, like I said, either two one minute um, contrasting styles or a two minute solo. But again, it can be kind of lenient as well um, in that realm. What percentage of incomers are from out of state? That's a really great question. I don't have the exact number for you. Um, however, we have students who are all over the place. Uh, personally, I am from Chicago, so I'm very much out of state. We also do have a great handful of students who are from Southern California or um, from the Bay Area as well. We also have students who are from Kansas and New York and Michigan and Nevada and Arizona. So we do have a really wide range of students all over the place, um, which is really great because it creates a really awesome community and environment where we all get to come together and dance. And then we even have people who come from the same studios and it's really awesome to kind of all be in the same space. Um, all right, so a day in the life kind of of a dancer here at Chapman. Um, it's very individualized, which is great because it's super based on kind of your schedule, the things that you want, um, the classes that you want to pursue, the style, um, whether that's commercial or concert. Um, so typically, we recommend you only have two technique classes a day, technique classes being what um, our jazz, modern, our ballet, 
And then on top of those, you can layer in your additional electives or your additional technique classes. So for example, we have ballroom and we have tap and we have hip hop. Um, we have other lecture courses um, such as dance education and outreach and dance and film. Um, we have a commercial industry course that you can take and a musical theater class. Um, so we have a lot of really great opportunities that have you dancing all day, but they really do value kind of a healthy dancer here. So we don't want you to be dancing five technique classes back to back to back to back and then going into six hours of rehearsal and then going home and getting home at 10 p.m. and doing five hours of homework. We really value kind of the healthy dancer and also we acknowledge that we're still all students so that it's important to have a social life. It's important to be involved with social clubs on campus or Greek life or whatever you're interested in doing. So a typical day is usually, again, those one to two technique classes, an elective class or two, a lecture class, and then also your general education courses on main campus. So it's a very well-balanced, um, well-rounded education on top of our rehearsals. So uh, depending on what concerts you're in, as well as how many pieces in those concerts that you are in, um, you can have one and a half hours of rehearsal per night um, to sometimes three hours. Um, it's usually one to two rehearsals in the evening. Um, me personally, as a senior, um, I don't have a singular day off, but I also have two jobs. So I'm working and I'm doing all that kind of stuff, but it's all about kind of how you manage that. Um, and the faculty is really, really great at working with you to make sure that you're in a good, healthy spot where you're growing, that you're not burning yourself out too quickly, um, that it's a really great pace for you individually. So that's something that's so great about Chapman is that it is very individualized. And if you want that major rigor of a conservatory, you have it. And if you really want to focus on splitting your time between dance and your health sciences, then you got that too. So it's really great. Um, I hope that answered that question. It's kind of a hard question to answer because it's, it's very unique to each of the individual. Um, in terms of wearing certain things to the callback audition, I would say wear something that's you, but also wear something that is still presenting your lines and presenting um, maybe the technique and the style that you're doing. So if you're doing um, a solo that's very hip hop, maybe wear something that is a little bit more baggy just with layers. So you, maybe you have like a leotard on under that so that you can really show off those lines and your technique in that way. Um, I would say just kind of know yourself, know your body, know your solo and do what's best for you. Um, the most important thing about our auditions and kind of our interview um, processes is that we see who you are. We don't want to see a cookie cutter dancer. We don't want to see every single dancer in a leotard and tights. We really want to embrace the individual. Um, in terms of student body and the diversity, we're working very, very hard to kind of continue to bring awareness into our diversity as well as um, our student body and also our faculty as well of our as well as our courses academically and in our curriculum. So we're creating um, new courses all the time, bringing in new faculty that are both in the industry for commercial concert, um, different gender studies, different racial equity, diversity and inclusion studies. Um, we're doing workshops, we're doing performances based off of those. Um, we're doing series with guest speakers, um, creating new classes that revolve around um, Black academia and Black social dance and kind of integrating that into our curriculum to really bring awareness to um, the really great diverse community that we have and that we want to continue to foster. So that's something that's definitely something um, on our priority that we're con continuing to expand upon um, every day. And we have um, an advisory council too that meets with the chair of our department that I'm also on. Um, and we bring all these concerns and all these ideas to her. And it's really awesome because we see a lot of immediate change um, throughout the department. So for example, um, one of our first meetings, we said, listen, we're all really burnt out. We kind of went from zero to 100 coming from being online to just wanting to do everything that we possibly could. Um, what can we do to have 
a day of rest or something. And a week later, we had a community day where all classes were canceled and all the dance majors just came and we were all outside in front of the studio just talking and eating and having fun and listening to music and just having a sense of community. Um, so it's a really great way that the department takes care of us too. Um, going back to some stuff about auditions, um, you do not have to wear all black, you can wear colors. Um, and again, kind of really focus on doing what makes you the most you, if that helps. In terms of traveling abroad as a dance major, um, it is possible. I would say it's more common and more likely to involve yourself with travel courses. So for example, we have had travel courses to Israel, our presidential fellow, Ido Tadmore, um, and our chair of the department, Julianne O'Brien, they took a group of students to Israel to have residency and performance opportunities with um, Batsheva and Vertigo and um, a lot of really great opportunities um, to take Gaga classes and company class with these major, major companies. So we have a lot of opportunities such as those. We also are organizing a trip to New York to take classes with different studios in New York, um, such as Steps, and then also go and see shows and really kind of integrate ourselves within the culture there. So we have a lot of really awesome travel abroad courses. We also have a semester at sea, which is pretty popular. Um, unfortunately, right now, all of our travel abroad classes are put on hold because of COVID. Um, but hopefully in the near future, those will be brought back because they're super, super awesome. Um, again, it's just something that you really have to plan and kind of plan accordingly um, a year in advance, we usually recommend just because it does take a lot of timing um, and a lot of pre-planning since as a dance major, your schedule is, is pretty scheduled off in terms of the times that you take things or um, the classes that you have to take for that certain year. Um, but again, it's been done and it, it is done every semester. Um, and if not every semester, at least every year, um, we've had upperclassmen who have gone to London for a semester um, as a dancer. We also have a lot of travel abroad opportunities, not as a dancer, that if you can take a semester off from dance and take at local studios in the, in the area that the dance department will help you locate. So you can go and take your other major classes in a foreign country or your minor classes. Um, going back to auditions, um, will the warm-up class for the callback be ballet? And if so, if, if so, should we bring point shoes? It typically varies with every um, audition. So sometimes we'll have a ballet class, Sometimes we'll have a Pilates class. Sometimes we have um, a modern and a jazz class. So it really depends on the faculty that are there um, presenting the work, but it is very dependent on that day. You don't have to bring point shoes, but again, if that's something that you wanna showcase in your audition or your callback, great, definitely do that. Um, we really wanna see the individualized dancer and how you bring your unique individual talents to the table. So bring out those point shoes, that's great. Um, but again, not required. All right. Any other questions about anything that we've already covered? I feel like I've been talking for a long time. So let me take a sip of water and we can kind of go from there. Feel free to just unmute too. Great, okay. Let's go back a little bit to admissions and kind of go through that process again. All right, so what are the admission um, audition requirements, time of, time of year and where? So all that information should be on the Chapman University um, College of Performing Arts page specifically for the Department of Dance. All those deadlines will be there. Um, I could probably even link that to you guys right now in the chat if you just give me one second. So if you go into onto this page, that, oops, sorry, only sent that to one person, everyone. 
Um, if you go to that link right there, it should take you to all that information specifically for the Department of Dance um, and kind of exploring the different programs, the application process, kind of what you need to do after you fill out the common application with the creative supplement, um, as well as um, kind of the guidelines for the callback. So with callbacks, you will be invited after um, your pre-screens are reviewed. Um, and then from there, that becomes your in-person or your virtual audition and your interview process as well. From there, then after that, you get um, either invited um, to come and be a student or not. Um, again, I don't have exact numbers for the amount of students that are invited. Um, it really depends on the year, how many applicants we get. Um, but usually our goal is to have around 35 to 45 in the incoming class. Um, so it is, it's very selective, um, but we really do embrace that individual dancer. All right. Um, there is not a certain date for when you find out. Um, however, it does vary whether you're doing early action slash early decision or regular action. So usually you find out roughly in December or January. It's going to be a little bit later this year, I think, because they're changing the admission requirements. Um, so typically, if you're doing early action, um, that's around the time that you find out. So your audition will be before that. Regular action and regular decision is typically a little bit later, more so in, in the March genre of time. Um, but that's a little bit subject to change. But there's not an exact date, if that answers that question. Um, usually creative supplement, after you submit that, there also is not an exact date. It depends on when you submit that as well. Um, usually it's before the auditions um, are happening, um, obviously, so that you have time to plan and travel and figure all that stuff out. Uh, but you'll you'll have plenty of time to kind of make that decision. And you typically can also um, pick the date that works best for you if you're invited. We have a multiple auditions throughout the year. Um, I guess since we're on that topic at the callbacks, when we show our solos, do you think we should show the same solo that we put in the pre-screens or a new one? I think it really kind of, again, depends on you as an individual and really what would you like to showcase as, as who you are as a dancer? If that's your pre-screen, um, then great, do that. Most likely, um, you'll, you'll have a faculty member who maybe hasn't seen it in that way, um, especially if you submit to one minutes and you want to maybe do the full two minute of, um, of one of those solos, that would be a great option. But honestly, pick the one that you feel most near and dear to your heart that makes you who you are that's gonna be what's gonna show and shine the brightest. Um, usually finding out about the callbacks, you'll get an email um, or contacted um, specifically from the Office of Admissions and the Dance Department. Um, yes, you could find out about the callback and you'll have an option to choose when you audition. So, if there's an audition that's three weeks after that per se, um, and you're like, oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna be in California during that time anyway. Um, that could be an option um, as well. We typically like to have our solos be about two minutes. Um, there wouldn't be any sort of deduction um, or kind of penalty for having that. Um, if anything, the faculty will just be like, great, that's great, we've seen enough, and that's not a bad thing at all. Um, we just want to make sure that we have time to really kind of um, see everyone and have that personalized interaction with each of the students. Because also, if you're doing a, like a three-minute solo or a two-and-a-half-minute solo, um, we have, you have an interview right after, so if you're like literally huffing and puffing and out of breath from doing a full concert, then that might not be the best thing um, for you anyway, just because you have to have that interview right after you perform. So that's just another food for thought. Um, 
there is no effect being in person versus Zoom for your admission into the program. We look at all of those auditions equally and on the exact same playing field. Like I said, we really try to structure them the exact same way. And the reason why we're doing both of them is to continue to provide the convenience. Um, so there isn't any sort of deduction or penalty for doing that. Um, if you're submitting your applications for early action, you again, we don't have a set date of when you could be contacted for a callback. It really depends on when you're submitting for that. Um, so yeah, sorry, I can't give you an exact date. We don't have an exact date. It kind of is just rolling basis. And also the interview usually consists of kind of just like general questions about why you're interested in Chapman. Um, and you'll see that as a part of your pre-screen as well in your creative supplement. Um, there's typically some, some questions, some interview questions that you record yourself giving um, as a part of your pre-screen and they'll be similar to that. And we also just wanna know more about you. What makes you you? What other things are you interested? What are you interested about seeing at Chapman? Um, again, we're really invested and interested in seeing um, what makes you you and who you are as an individual. Um, we're not looking for that perfect cookie cutter dancer. We really wanna see what makes you you. Um, let's see. Does that help any with admissions and kind of what all that means about the interview process, the audition, the pre-screens, um, the dates? I'm just reading through the rest of these comments. Um, ju yeah, just to clarify, so you do have um, the pre-screen, which is a part of the creative supplement through the common application. From there, you're invited to the either the in-person or the virtual callback. Which, it, which is your audition and your interview. So it, yeah, that can be a little bit confusing based on um, kind of how we phrase that, um, but that in-person or virtual callback slash audition is your interview and there is not another layer after that. That's what that is. Um, great. All right, I think that answers all of the questions about admissions and auditions and kind of like those requirements. Again, all our information is on um, that website that I linked in this chat, um, kind of going um, through all that information and it's, it's laid out really clearly there for you. And feel free to also give the department a call if you have any other follow-up questions or um, specifics um, about the admission process. You can also direct those questions to the admissions office as well. Um, so it is two o'clock. So if you have to go, great. And if you have any specific questions for me, I can talk a little bit about my own personal experience um, and answer some of those remaining questions in the chat if you want to stay for that and if you have other things to go to. Great. Um, thank you guys all for coming and feel free to stay if you want to listen to the to the next part. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Um, I, I do have a question. Um, my son um, is interested and obviously, um, you know, being a male in dance, can you share a little bit about what that's like in the department? What's the ratio? Are there pa, pa to do opportunities? Um, you know, what, what's that like? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so our current income or our current first year class, um, we had a record of 10 males, which was super exciting. Um, cause the ratio usually is pretty, is pretty small comparatively. So I know for my class personally, there were five men coming in and there were about 40 females. So that ratio is a little bit 
like this, which is, um, you know, a great thing for opportunities for those guys. Um, but then it's also a really great way to continue to integrate yourself into the department. Um, we do have a very mixed split between commercial versus concert. Um, so kind of distinguishing that a little bit between um, doing more commercial jazz or musical theater or Broadway um, versus going into like a contemporary ballet company um, or a modern contemporary company along those lines. Um, those kind of things are going to depend and vary based on the student and kind of their individual goals, um, which kind of goes hand in hand with how I was talking about that individualized education. So me personally, I'm very interested in doing ballet and contemporary ballet. So I kind of structure my schedule around that thing um, and around that little niche. Um, so I double up on ballet every semester. So I take ballet every day versus just two days a week. Um, and within that, we do have partnering opportunities, um, specifically through our ballet repertoire course, which is over inner term. So that month of January, um, a part of that um, kind of first semester in between first and um, spring semester, um, we have that repertoire class. Um, I would say that there are a lot of performance opportunities specifically um, for the guys, just since there are less of them. Um, every dance always needs, no, I mean, not every dance, but a lot of dances always need um, need a guy or two. So that's a really great opportunity for them. Um, but it doesn't place anyone above each other or prioritize them above each other. We're all still on that equal plane, if that makes sense. I don't know. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, it does. She's just wanting to know perspective. Um, he's just a junior, so we're, we're kind of new to this whole pathway. So yeah. <laughs> just learning. Definitely, it's definitely um, been a really great experience for me. Um, Again, it's that individualized approach. So if that's something that he's interested, in, I've also done um, outside projects through my professors here. So I've done like the Nutcracker and other ballets through local studios and companies, um, just having that connection. So I have that avenue as well, um, if that's something, something that he's interested in. Great, thank you so much, that's awesome. Um, Let me go back. Um, in terms of dance team answering Riley's question, um, I want to say, I think you might have to be a dance major to be on the dance team, but you can have another major as well. So I'm not sure if you can be like a business admin and also be on dance team, but I know you can for our team Shaka, which is our hip hop team. You, that's open to anyone. Um, I might be wrong. And the only reason why I don't know that answer is because I'm not on dance team and I don't have another major. Um, but from what I know, all of the people who are on that team um, are a dance major. And yes, the link for this recording will be shared. Just this Q&A. Thank you. Yeah, you kind of broke up a little bit. So I think what you asked, correct me if I'm wrong, is kind of plans for after senior year and how I feel the department and the program has helped prepare me. Great. Okay. So million dollar question. Um, who knows? But for right now, my plan is I'll be staying in the area um, for a couple of years. I am planning on apprenticing with um, a local company. Um, I mentioned it before in the presentation, Backhouse Contemporary Dance. Um, so I'll be apprenticing um, with them, um, doing their, their company class and their rehearsal. Um, and I'm actually starting that for a spring semester. So I'll be doing that over the spring and then into next year as well. I also teach at a local studio. Um, so I'll be teaching as well. Um, and then also hopefully living in LA, doing random auditions, um, doing that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say exactly where you're gonna go, especially with dance, because it is such a broad field, which is so exciting because we're such a diverse um, student body where so many of my friends wanna go into commercial jazz and do 
the audition scene in LA. And then so many of my friends want to move to New York and pursue um, companies out there or Broadway. Um, I have friends who are in Europe right now performing with companies. Um, so it it's really unique to each of the individual. But I think Chapman probably has the best program for preparing you for all of that. It's really great because a lot of our faculty are one still in the industry, still creating. Um, so for example, the, the company that I will be apprenticing with, um, she teaches here and she has um, workshops and performances. Um, so she has her own company. She also teaches class like how to create your own company and how to manage and create shows and create work. Um, and so it's, it's all very applicable to the world around you and the industry around us. Um, we also have industry classes where um, we have convention teachers and other choreographers and working professionals come in and teach class on like um, auditioning and resume building and all that stuff. Um, we also have our senior seminar class um, that you take as a second semester senior. Um, and that's kind of like a part where we really, really focus on honing in on all of those applicable things um, and bringing them into a course. But it really starts from the moment that you step on campus until you graduate, starting with that introduction to dance studies course. Um, it starts preparing you for the life of a dancer, um, educating you on huge choreographers right now and different avenues of dance and different ways to use your dance degree and dance history. Um, so they really start you broad and the more kind of farther along you get, the more specific you can be depending on the path that you want, if that makes sense. So I feel so prepared, even though, yes, I wanna mainly do concert work, but our class um, curriculum is so diverse and I've taken everything that I want to take and maybe things that are very out of my comfort zone um, so that I do feel most prepared that if I am in LA and there's an audition opportunity to go audition for a music video, I have the tools, the resources, the skills that I need to do that. Anyone else? I think there are a couple up here. I don't know if they left the meeting yet. Um, I guess that, yeah, that kind of answers a little bit about the commercial dance program is that we're very, very split. Um, and we're also working every day to kind of stop distinguishing between concert and commercial and how we can really fuse the two together, especially as an industry right now, that is becoming so fused. There isn't a clear line between commercial and concert as there used to be, um, which is incredible because that's one of the most marketable things about a dancer and a performer and an artist right now is being able to, to be fluid in between the two. And having maybe just did, maybe you just did a tour on Broadway and then being like, I'm gonna go set a piece now on this modern company. Um, so Chapman does a really, really good job kind of figuring out a way to blend those two together. So yes, we're commercial. Yes, we're concert. Yes, we're both. And simultaneously neither, so. I think the biggest reason why I did choose Chapman um, was that diverse approach to education, um, individuality. Um, and kind of the biggest thing I would say would just be like the community. Um, we're, we're like really a genuinely big, happy family. Like we're all together like 24 seven, even if we're not in class together, we're, we're hanging out, we're going to get food, we're having rehearsal, we're hanging out outside in between our classes. Um, and it's a very supportive and uplifting community. I don't think I've ever felt overwhelmingly um, I guess, pinned against each other and used competitively. Always in dance, there's going to be that competitive element, but I think Chapman is so special in kind of formulating a department that is uplifting, encouraging, and supportive for any avenue. So we don't have 
just one group of people who are, oh, these are our hip hoppers and they're like at the top of the food chain. It's, it's not like that at all. And of course there are gonna be groups who are like, we love hip hop, we're gonna take all these hip hop classes and then maybe there's like some ballet people over here. But the great thing about our department is everyone can intermix and everyone can interchange. Um, and I think that community is something that makes us so special and so unique from any of the other programs that I looked at. Um, I mostly looked at schools that were in Southern California because I was like, get me out of Chicago, no more winter, take me to Sunshine and Palm Springs and all that good stuff, LA, um, the beach, Chapman's close to like four or five different beaches. Um, so that's great. So I was like, get me out of there. Um, but that's kind of different between all the programs that I did see is the community aspect and how supported I felt even stepping foot into the audition. All students were talking to me and upperclassmen were talking to me and professors were talking to me. And it just felt like I was already a part of something rather than there to like be judged, if that makes sense. Um, something that I also really loved about Chapman um, was the choreographic opportunities. I was really interested in creating and choreographing and we're one of the few programs probably in the whole country that supports, creates and presents over 80 pieces of student work per year. So we have all of our, or all except for one of our spring concerts. So that's about three to five are all student choreographed. And then we also have um, different delineations between classes. So like I mentioned, our works in progress concert that's choreographed by um, sophomore dance majors. Our concert on team is our juniors. And then our senior is our main stage spring concert. So those are all student choreographed. And then we also have our Chapman Dance Alliance Club that all dance majors are a part of. Um, and that's completely student run, student organized, um, student tech. Um, so there's a huge emphasis on student collaboration, student um, creativity and artistry. And we also have a lot of really great connections to, um, to our film school, our film college Dodge perform or Darge College of um, Media and Film that was just rated like number, I don't know, top three in the whole country. Um, so we have a lot of collaboration with them as well, um, making independent films and a lot of independent side projects. We also work a lot with alum um, who are setting work and, and creating shows and everything like that. So there's so many opportunities to choreograph and to create, which is super, super incredible. Um. All right, I think that just about answered everything in the chat. So I'll leave it open to you guys if you have any other things um, that you want to talk about, any other questions from a student perspective or information about the department. I will go ahead and put my email in the chat as well if you have any follow-up questions that you wanna ask a student, um, feel free to reach out to me whenever. Um, or also, like I said, also our administrative assistant, um, Clara Harnett can be um, a great resource for you or reach out directly to the chair of our department, Julianne O'Brien. Um, again, if you have specific admission questions, you can also email or call the Office of Admissions and they'd be happy to answer any of those questions. So that's my email if you have anything. Um, but if you guys are all good, I think that just about wraps up um, the session for today. Like I said, please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, we're here for you. We wanna give you as much information as you can and we would love to welcome you to Chapman. So that's about all I have. Thank you guys all for logging on and staying this extra 15 to kind of listen and get my perspective. Bye, have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you.